Hello, beautiful people, and hello, beautiful Veronica. How are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. In fact, I'm blessed. You are blessed. We are all blessed. You guys, we are going to have a very special guest today. And Eric, my son, who is in the afterlife, for those of you who do not know Eric Medhus, is going to help bring her forward and help with the channeling that beautiful Veronica does so well. Raquel Welsh is the name of the interviewee today. Hi, Eric. I love you. He says, I love you, Mom. And I'm laughing because you know, you know, Eric is excited about this one. Oh, God, I know. <laughs> he loves beautiful, big breasted cis women. So oh, oh. He, listen, he is like a kid in a candy store. Eric. What's the first thing you said to uh, Raquel, Eric? He, he said, well, he says he wants to preface it with, of course, he's being respectful. Of okay. Course. Of, of course, course, he's being respectful. But when he says, when he is in the midst of such beauty, yeah. he said, honestly, mom, you may not believe this, but I was a bit speechless. Oh, that, that is, is hard to believe, but, yeah. right? but take gonna, it word. He says, after, after I got over the being speechless, and realized what a beautiful, beautiful soul she is on the inside. Yeah. I fell even more in love. Oh, that's so sweet. All right. So we're going to tell you a little bit about, for those of you who I can't believe have been living under a rock, don't know who Raquel Welch, Welch is. Anyway, she, she's a very famous star. She died from a cardiac arrest February 15, 2023, at the age of 82. At the time of her death, she, you also, she was also suffering from Alzheimer's disease. So we've collected some uh, things, for, some questions from our wonderful community. So here we go. And thank you so much, Raquel, for coming. Is it okay if I call you Raquel and you call me Elisa? Oh, she says, of course. Very informal, very warm, welcoming energy. Awesome. You know, supposedly there's this rumor that you were highly intelligent super high iq a lot of people say that can't be true because she's so beautiful she can't have it all but that was true wasn't it she says i'm here to tell you that was not a rumor that was the truth yeah oh, <laughs> no i mean she says let me clarify the truth is i am an extremely intelligent individual okay. and the roles i played i played right into the hand of what people thought i was so oh. i understand understanding she says yes yeah, of course all right question number one actually number two looking back what were the earliest signs of your alzheimer's she said that's a very interesting question because you don't know what you don't know and she says it's only in hindsight that i can see but i began to forget even the simplest simplest things yeah. I can remember one instance where I was trying to button my blouse, line up the buttonholes. Mm. And as simple and silly as that would seem, I couldn't seem to get it right in my mind. People often overlook the smallest things. Mm -hmm. What is the spiritual reason behind your Alzheimer's? I can only speak to that for me because it is individual for each person. Everybody, as you know, has their own contract. And Eric is jumping in saying this is very much personalized to her. So the spiritual meaning for her was that she could kind of revert back and look at time through the eyes of a child, an unconditioned child in the world. And so what she's showing me is that she had this beautiful life growing up. And as she got through it, she forgot at times just how beautiful it was. And so when she had no place to go, she could often go back in her mind and recreate what it was that she feels like she missed 
as she was living it. That's very profound. Interesting. Yeah, she's very deep, very oh, deep. Gosh. What can we do to try not to develop dementia? Any advice from a spirit? And Eric, you might want to chime in on this one too. Yeah. Um, they are both in agreement that the continuation of exercising the brain mm -hmm. and making sure that you're doing, again, she is equating it to the simplest things, word searches, crossword puzzles, which we have heard forever. Mm -hmm. But she's also saying to become familiar with anything that's bigger than you are. Learn something outside of what it is that you know. She said never, even, and she's laughing because she's saying, even if it's a new card game, yeah, continue to learn. The brain needs exercise just like the body, Eric says. And I'm sure uh, proper diet is, goes hand oh. in hand with exercising the brain and the body probably. Absolutely. And she's saying she's going on to say that she took very good care and was very serious about her health and wellness. Yeah. Um, and Eric chimes in to say, even though she did the right, quote unquote, right things, he says, this is an example of contract work. OK, because she was doing all of the right things by her confirmation. She was doing all the right the right things. Any advice for those who uh, who have people that have Alzheimer's that are in the family or friends, for that matter? Um, her and Eric, again, both agree on being gentle, mm -hmm. meeting them exactly where they're at, engaging in conversation that they are comfortable in having. And so she says in her later stages, she would reminisce to the best of her ability. Mm -hmm. And there were people surrounding her that encouraged her and had conversations mm -hmm. with her and made her feel, and here's the key, Eric says, made her feel valid, validated, and important. Oh yeah, that's so important. Dignity. Yeah, very important. Was this your last planned exit point, Raquel? Um, She's showing me between the ages of 78 and 84. There was a span. Okay. Um, okay, right after you passed away, what was your transition journey like? I mean, were you kind of puzzled about your surroundings? I don't, I don't even know what kind of beliefs you had about life after death. You can share that if you wish. Yeah, she says that um, at first... <laughs> Um, she's using the illustration of somebody throwing cold water in her face, like, like, like that, she says. And it wasn't like that in a scary way. It was like that in an, oh my gosh, almost like a kaleidoscope image, she says, mm -hmm. where it was just all of these beautiful colors and everything was merging into everything else. And she says, more importantly than that was this buoyancy, this lightness, this almost as if I were a feather oh. floating through the colors. And as I floated through the colors, I could see them come alive. And she's doing this and, and red came on my body and orange came on my body. And ultimately, as I came out, it was this incredible white light that warmed me like I've never felt before. Mm. Who it was you, beautiful. Who did you meet when you first crossed over? She said she was met by a paternal grandfather okay. her fa on her father's side. And this was a very loving experience. Mm -hmm. um, she never had any fear of death, mm. she said. Um, and it wasn't necessarily due to a religious belief. Here, this is very profound. I This makes me want to choke up. Mm -hmm. She says she never had a fear of death because she lived life so well. Mm -hmm. She lived it to the fullest. 
And she says, there is no such thing as perfection, but when you can walk the truth of what's in your heart, you don't have fears. Wow. Did you have some sort of spiritual mission? It feels like you probably came here to teach people that very thing, maybe. I don't know. She says, I always wanted to be a role model in the sense that it wasn't about physicality, but it was about the, the essence, the true inner knowing, inner person. She said, I happen to have a shell that people gravitated towards, that people um, admired, she said. But if you think about it, that was the vehicle to get people to listen to me. Now, she's laughing and Eric is laughing because, you know, sometimes people weren't able to listen. Yeah. And part of that was the people that were seeing beyond her shell. Yeah. This was in her later life were the ones that were impacted the most. Mm. Okay. Okay. Right after you oh, did that already. Oh yeah. What kind of beliefs did you have? Were you raised in a religious family? She says not necessarily religious, but I wouldn't say agnostic. She's saying there was a belief in something bigger, but it really was about love and it was about being supported mm -hmm. in my dreams. Mm -hmm. I always knew that I was born to impact people. It was beautiful. Can you recall the very last memory before your passing? She says that to answer that is rather complicated yeah, because okay. what I experienced was a surge of all coming together, mm -hmm. almost as if streams were coming in, but I could see the most precious memory I had was the birth of my children. Oh. That would be mine too. And I went back to a place where I birthed them and then I transitioned. It literally was full circle. Um, that is very profound. Okay. Subsequently, did you participate in an orientation where ethereal guides and individuals from the spirit realm introduced you to heaven and showed you around? Like, and Denise showed you around, um, Eric. Yes, she said that's very common. Yeah. It's a very common thing. And she said it's not like the human, oh, you put your coat over here and you uh, put your suitcase over here. She said it's, it's definitely not like the human realm. It's more of, okay, this is where you process this aspect of your life and this is where you go into this piece of evolution and this is where you pre-plan what's potentially coming based on what you had she said it's very difficult to speak it in human terms but okay. that's the best that she could give us okay did, but did you get a choice of and what kind of age you wanted to be in spirit mm -hmm. like i wouldn't want to be 82 frankly yeah, she says you're always, and Eric agrees with, with this, you're always um, a thought away from being whatever age you want. For her, she went to 36. Oh, okay. That's a nice number, three and six. Mm -hmm. Those are magical numbers according to Tesla. Tesla oh, that's yeah. 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 Uh, and that's my husband's race number for his motorcycle. Uh, overall, how was your experience of transitioning from life to death? Okay, we sort of did that. Uh, okay, what do you do there in heaven? She says, I am motivating, inspiring, leading the way that we educate our young girls on what it means to be themselves. Yeah. In other words, she says, I influence the influencers. So her energy of being intelligent, not being afraid to show it, is something that she 
inspires to all of the leaders who are working with the girls. So as a guide, and she's using the term guide, as a guide, she begins to surround all of these leaders um, who are teaching our young girls how to be. She's a heavily, she's heavily influencing. And she's also, she's not condoning the body and taking care of it because she really was about that. But she's saying the emphasis cannot be put on that. Right. Right. Of course. Uh, this is interesting. Your parents were intellectuals, apparently, and you came from Bolivian royalty. Wow. What did they think of you being labeled as a sex symbol since they were intellectuals? Um. She says anybody that was close to me, anybody that knew me thought that it was just wording from outside. Anybody that really knew me knew that I thought it was silliness. Okay. Okay. Were you Miss Welch sexually pro quo for a movie career? What does that? I don't really know what that means. Did uh, did you use your sexuality, your sexual appeal to advance yourself in the movies, I guess, maybe? She said, I would be foolish not to have that open the door. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. opened the door. Okay. And yes, it got old very quickly. And yes, I got pigeonholed into playing certain roles until I decided I wouldn't. I have so much breadth to me so much width yeah. to me so much creativity to me that people couldn't just put me in one role and think i would stay there but if i'm being honest with you i loved every minute of it yeah i would be foolish not to yeah. and one role got me the next role got me the next role got me the next role did you ever feel like you were being exploited as an actress in hollywood Absolutely. Can you tell me about any particular instances? Hang on, I'm going to get something while you answer that. Um, there was a lot of handsy handsy. And oh, when oh. you look like I look, people assume that you have a certain mentality. Mm -hmm. And I was very quick to shut it down. I'm also very open to tell you that I was unsure how to love. No, I didn't really fully understand what a love relationship was between a man and a woman because my early beginnings in the in my career, I mistook attraction for love mm -hmm. and I let the wrong people get close to me. Mm -hmm. And she's very um, she's not. I would have to say, as the translator, she's not very, um, she doesn't say this easily. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. It must be, since so many people were sexually attracted to you, it must have been very difficult to trust. Do they really love me for my mind, my soul, my spirit, etc.? cetera? Mm -hmm. So was that part of it? Th that was very much part of it. I didn't understand what true love was. And also she says, I, as I aged, I got a really strong understanding of what I wanted. And I was always somebody that I moved very quickly. If something wasn't right, boom, it was gone. And she says, I'm also not embarrassed, ashamed, and no one should be to say this. I had a very healthy sex drive. Okay, good. Excellent. And when women have a very se healthy sex drive, she says, we can get thought of as a certain way. Yeah. Why I didn't get taken under with that stuff that was going on and is still going on, she says, is because I wouldn't use the words willing participant, but I knew who I wanted to be intimate with. And I was very strong to say no to the ones I didn't want to be intimate with. Good for you. Okay, this person says, I love you in the Musketeer movies. I'm going to have to watch those. Was it wonderful working with Michael York? And did you have any past life connection to that time period? 
Um, she says it was just a blast. She said it was the most fun. And um, she doesn't relate any time period like that that she lived. Okay. But she just said Michael York was one beautiful human being. Oh, that's wonderful. So can you talk about an, another life, past or future, that most affected your life as Raquel Wells? Um, <clears throat> one of the things she's showing me is that she grew up um, in one of her lifetimes in a tremendous amount of poverty. Wow. Um, and really was not, um, as she could see, uh, gifted in any way. Um, she kind of was just existing in that lifetime. But what was so beautiful, she says about that lifetime, I didn't have the shell, the exterior that I had in this lifetime, but I was a very profound person. I was actually a writer. Um, and I was somebody that captured people with the written word. But the one thing is she never owned who she was. She used, um, a pseudo, a pen name, so mm. nobody ever really knew who she was. She had this aversion to the limelight in that lifetime. Wow. All right. So what did you learn from that life? Um, it helped me develop my intellect. It helped me to know the difference between real and fake when it came to relationships. Mm. It helped me to understand how talented one could be. Um, she says that lifetime she credits specifically for her not being attached to her looks in this lifetime. Oh, very nice. So what did you, what were you here to learn? I mean, we talked about what you were here to teach, but this lifetime, were you here to learn anything in particular? The first thing she says is that she was here to learn not to take herself so seriously. Okay. To remember to have fun with what is and to know that she is both intelligent and beautiful and that they can coexist simultaneously. What people don't realize is I was a very brilliant businesswoman. Oh, very good. Like Lucille Ball. She was apparently brilliant. Mm -hmm. Do you have any, do you, what was your greatest accomplishment? And do you feel like you accomplished it? Well, that would have to be right away. My two children, I that, would, that would be the obvious, she says. Mm -hmm. But also just breaking the stereotypical mold that because you look a certain way, you can't play a certain part. Mm -hmm. I got different parts as I got older. Um, the more dramatic parts, I feel like fed a piece of me um, that I knew was in me, but people may not have seen. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, do you have any regrets? I do not necessarily call them regrets, but I wish I would have taken the time to fully learn how to commit and love. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you plan your fame before you came into this incarnation? I wouldn't say I planned fame, but I planned to be a great influencer, a great inspiration. That could have gone either way. It could have gone academia or it went the way that it went. So those were the two options. Interesting. Did you have any Bolivian ancestors that greeted you on the other side? You said your paternal grandfather, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Or was yes. that the main one? Um, she says that her father's sister was also somebody that brought her over. Um, it wasn't anything royal like though. She says, because okay. when we cross, everybody becomes equal. Yeah. The royalty thing is only, um, as real as the existence in the human form. Okay. Have you reincarnated or if not, do you plan to soon? I have not reincarnated. No time, so. Yet. Um, I don't know that that's on the agenda, she says. Okay. 
It's a wait and see. Mm -hmm. TBA, uh, what do you lo love the best about being on the spirit side now? I love the view. She mm. says, I love that I get to see everything, be everything, experience everything. There isn't a thing we can't do. We are not, and she's looking at Eric and she's saying, we are not restricted in any way, shape or form, right? She mm -hmm. says, we can, we can be in 1902 and we can be in 2028. She says, it's just this incredible freedom. Oh my God. Yes. Uh, do you want to share anything that not many people or maybe nobody knows about? Uh, from your life as Raquel Welsh, mm -hmm. especially like a little funny quirk or. Well, what? she says one thing that's important to know is that the greatest love of her life besides her children is, is her children's father. Oh, that's wonderful. That was, that was the true love of her life. That's one thing. Um, and she says, this is a silly thing, she says, but I can't stand my feet touched. Oh, wow. Interesting. I wonder where that comes from. I just can't stand. Even the thought of somebody getting near my feet just makes me insane, she oh, says. Oh, that's funny. We all have something. Uh, is there any final message you want to tell your fans, the collective, anybody before we close? She says, I'm very grateful for what I was given in this lifetime, but I really, really want people to remember me as somebody who was both intellectual and fun and beautiful. And I want young girls coming up not to look at me in pictures and posters and on the internet and see me as a body, but to understand that they too are beautiful. And when they engage their intellect, they become even more beautiful. Absolutely. Eric, do you like, would you like to ask her anything before we close? Eric says that he's been spending quite a bit of time with her. And he says to let you all know, she's a very deep, deep person. It's clearly. And he will be doing some work with her in terms of, helping young girls with image mm -hmm. and self-worth. So he's very committed to that. That's wonderful. Well, thank you. It's been an honor, Raquel. I really appreciate that. We've all learned so much. And thank you, Veronica. Okay, you guys can get in touch with Veronica Drake. It's going to be on a splash screen, maybe at the end, I don't know. And it'll also be in the description box. Check her out. You can see she's a magnificent translator. Love you guys. Bye.